Bola, bola. Oh, no. Kurang apa yang mista? Kurang apa yang abur na? Usah di kau mianon na, na bura. Naka. 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 Hai, <laughs> Não vi se ele estava andando aqui, me deixou. Ladies and gentlemen, a bloody nakatio. As Dio Sanganga has said, it's always a pleasure to be here in North, pleasure to be here in Sanganga. I always cherish my time, my memories of Northern Division. Uh, it is this place is true to its spirit of uh, friendliness and hospitality. Before I um, talk on the on the occasion today, as I want to speak on an issue that bothers us, our prime minister, myself, both as acting prime ministers also as a, a member of the government. And this is with regard to road carnage. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been witnessing an increasing number of road fatalities. We cannot continue to allow the minority reckless drivers to destroy dreams. This is gone beyond the limit. In fact, this should not happen at all on our roads. Our parents are losing their children. Our children are losing their parents. Dreams are shattered by a reckless minority. And it's going to the extent that regular road users are now scared to drive on the road because a reckless minority could pose a threat to them. I want to talk directly to this reckless minority that you need to stop now this reckless driving, overspeeding, which, in, which is threatening our people in this country. This morning I spoke to Acting Commissioner of Police in Dravu and asked him about the strategy that they have adopted to ensure that our people are safe on the road, <coughs> particularly during this festive season when a lot of people will hit the roads. He's working with the FRA, they devised a new strategy to ensure, one, people conduct appropriately, as well as those who attempt to break road rules will immediately be taken off the road. So I'm urging everyone to talk about this in the community, <coughs> talk about this at home, at the workplace, about ensuring that roads are a place where it's safe for people to, to travel, to drive. <coughs> there are also people who are crossing the road, children, they need to be safe. We need to be extra, extra vigilant, <coughs> particularly during this festive season. <coughs> Members of the Vanua, ladies and gentlemen, as a little too early on, it's a pleasure to be here today. Last Saturday, we were at Cassie in the interior 
in the interior of Dandroga province. And we launched the coastal operational plan for Ministry of Rural and Maritime Development. I want to tell you that over the next three years will be the most exciting time for a rural maritime community, given the vision that we have through Ministry of Agriculture, Rural and Maritime Development, and Waterways and Environment. The kinds of projects that we will do, the kinds of development work that we will do in the rural and maritime community area will transform, <coughs> will transform the entire rural and maritime area. Of course, these three years may not be enough, but we will do a substantial amount of work that will ensure that the livelihood of our rural and maritime community improves, our rural and maritime community will be secured, and our children will be able to be pursue their dreams in getting better education, better health services, through improvement of the infrastructure. You may recall some time back we had announced that we will construct in the first phase 52 crossings, <coughs> whether it's foot crossing, whether it's vehicular crossing. And about two months ago, we started, we started commissioning the completed crossings. And we started with the first one in Labasa. We'll be commissioning crossings. We did commissioning of crossing in Ra. We'll be doing five more commissioning uh, within the period of next two weeks in, in Suva, Central Division. We'll be commissioning four in Singatoka uh, within the next two weeks, which are all ready. We are on track to complete 52 of these crossings. These crossings are not simply a link between one end of the uh, creek to the other side of the creek. It is a connection between communities, connection between the rural and maritime community with the rest of the country. You would have noted this community, the crossing that we had there, was a simple foot crossing, which was also a threat to those little children who were crossing. Today what we have is a vehicular crossing, a very strong one built using engineering design where now vehicles can cross and bring commuters right to their homes. No longer you will have to carry large loads of your produce, your groceries, grocery shopping, walk from the road right to your home, no longer. We can now drive right to your doorstep. Ladies and gentlemen, our vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Banyam Rama, is to ensure that no one is left behind, immaterial of where you are, whether you are in the only <coughs> point, or in you know, Yisawas, or the Kumbia, or here. All of you, all of you will be part of the growth and development process that we are now pushing forward. It is very important that when a country grows and develops, people are engaged in the development process. Unless and until people are engaged in the development process, they will not benefit. You cannot let development take place when a lot of people are not involved in it. Then you do, what will happen? If people are not involved in the development process and development takes place, the income inequality will take place because wealth will be concentrated in the hands of few. It will not get redistributed. To ensure that redistribution takes place and therefore income inequality is reduced, you need to ensure that people participate. How do people participate? Landowners participate by leasing their land. Farmers participate by farming. <coughs> Laborers participate by selling their labor and earning a wage rate. Landowners participate by leasing the land, land and getting rent. Laborers participate by selling the labor and getting wages. Investors participate by investing and getting returns on their capital. Financial institutions participate by lending finance and getting returns in the form of interest rates. So we need to ensure that everyone participates in the growth, growth, growth process so that income distribution takes place 
and growth in the country is taking evenly. If you don't, then <laughs> growth will get centered around urban area or around the CBD, and you will see that there will be increased inequality and people in the outskirts, in the periphery, outside the center, will not do well, not do well they will suffer. And this is not the growth model that this government has. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to assure you that we have got major plans to take agriculture growth to a level which will be the mainstay of this economy. <coughs> Noble's potential, uh, numerous times I've said that <coughs> we need to harness the opportunities out there to take agriculture to a different level. And commercial agriculture is the way. We are attracting and we're inviting investors to come in and invest in the agriculture sector. Our primary sector has a lot of potential, including fisheries and forestry. And our colleague, ministerial colleagues are working very hard to take those ministers up as well. We will be announcing, we will be making two more major announcements in agriculture soon, which will demonstrate where and how we are really dealing with the binding constraints in agriculture. What are the binding constraints in agriculture? Is basic infrastructure in the, in the interior, like farm roads, drainage. These are the binding constraints. And we will announce, make an announcement of how we are going to deal with releasing these binding constraints so that agriculture can live from. What are the only other binding constraints in agriculture? It's with regard to ensuring that we mechanize our agriculture and we will be gradually making announcements about how we introduce mechanization in agriculture. We're working very hard on that. The other binding constraint in agriculture is about getting and attracting more new land into agriculture. We cannot continuously just work on the current amount of land if you really want to make a major breakthrough in agriculture production. We'll have to bring in new land. If you, if you travel around PG, one more level, with the level, you will see large tracts of land which <laughs> was under agriculture before are vacant now, or potential good arable land is lying <coughs> idle. Land is a natural capital. And any capital which does not provide positive return is a debt capital. It's of no value, no use. You cannot keep a capital idle. There's no, there's no economic logic to keeping a capital idle. You need to ensure that you return or get positive returns from that particular capital. Be it any capital you're talking about. It is important that we bring this natural resource under use in national interest, in national interest, and we will, we will get all the agriculture, vacant land, arable land, so that everyone benefits, the owners, the laborers, the farmers, and the nation benefits. Then only we can ensure that everyone's dreams are fulfilled. The entire growth process is about fulfilling the dreams of our ordinary Fijians, improving the livelihood, and ensuring that everyone prospers in this country. Today, I want to thank the community for their hard work, for their hard work in supporting our team from Ministry of Waterways to ensure that this is completed on time, and also their sisters, the timber that they provided. I want to thank Dio Senganga for organizing the uh, I-beams, uh, the uh, labor support. This crossing that we have done here, if you have given out to a contractor, it would have cost us no less than $100,000 no less than $100,000. If you think we did it at 50000 no. We did it at 20000 no. We did it at 10000 no. Less than that. So this is, the, this is how we can reach out to everyone because we don't have unlimited amount of money. No government, any government, whether it's America or China or Australia, New Zealand, they have a defined amount of budget. What we need to do those who are on the driver's seat is to ensure 
that we get maximum out of the allocated resources that we have. Ministry of Agriculture, or waterways, or no, infrastructure, no. Or whatever. We just cannot really nearly sit back and look for an easier solution by just engaging the contractors. You know. That textbook solution won't work. We are in a growth and development stage. Our people need service delivery very quickly. Our people need infrastructure very quickly because these are binding constraints for rural and maritime development. We need to unwind, unlock, release these constraints for growth to take place. Entire Ministry of Waterways and Environment, Agriculture, Rural and Maritime Development is now geared in this new, new, um, you know, trust, new uh, thinking about unwinding, unlocking the growth process, the constraints so that we can take place, growth can take place. I want to thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today. I look forward to having a Kalonua with you and how we could further assist the, this community here and the communities in Manmalevu. Thank you, Naka. Naka. <laughs>